Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. To have the merit from heaven to find yourselves in a journey to seek for the truth in a world full of distractions and full of darkness, full of spiritual noise, to find the ability to hear your inner voice is, uh, is not a simple thing, it's not a small thing. The world is screaming at you and calling you and inviting you and offering you to all kinds of temptations and with all that noise, to find some inner connection and especially people that are seeking for deep secrets of, of the essence of our being, being aware to the concept of Kabbalah and wanting to hear about the secret of, of the, the Creator, the hidden wisdom that's been given from ancient generations been given to the prophets and to the real righteous people through all the first generations. And to seek for that truth and to go for that in our world, in our lifetime, it means a lot. It means a lot about you. I wanted to share a little point that the Creator was revealing to me and bringing into my mind in the last few days. I was thinking about the reason, the purpose, why we've been aware and taught about secrets of Kabbalah. What's the purpose of Kabbalah at all? Why, why it's been given to us? If the secret, the essence of our being is to keep the commandments of the Creator and we just need to follow the advice commandments, orders, guidings of the Torah, of the Bible. So for that we need to learn only Shulchan Aruch and Halakha, and we need to learn the rules and to follow them. But we know that big righteous people, even though that they had a deep, deep understanding and a very wide knowledge on the Halakha, on the Jewish rules, and the way of setting the rules and and and, and and, and, and setting the halachot and the piske halachot, even though that they knew all that aspect and part of the Torah, they found a big need to put their mind into learning the secret and the Kabbalah. And the Torah in Pirkei Avot is telling us that a person should first of all prepare himself for 40 years of learning of all subjects of Torah and then when he filled himself with knowledge and with deep understandings now he is qualified and ready to go and to learn Kabbalah and to go and to put his mind into the secrets of Torah. So we see that it's a certain level that a person is supposed to reach that in a certain time of his life, he is focusing his mind and dedicating his life to learn that secret. Now, for us that have not learned for 40 years the depths of Talmud and learned all the halakha, there is a side to understand how come our soul, souls desired the knowledge of secret and Kabbalah, even if we are still in early stages of our learning. And the answer for that is that really our souls are very, very old and very ancient. And they've been to this world so many times in different lifetimes. And we learned much more than 40 years of Torah in past lives, in different lifetimes. And based on that knowledge that is standing with our souls in a permanent way for good forever, Based on that understanding, our souls are holding in that level that we desire and willing to learn Kabbalah and to dive into the sea of the secret. Now the Creator opened my eyes in the last few days to, to think about that topic of what's the purpose, what's the use of learning Kabbalah. 
if you remember last time we spoke, we spoke about that issue that the light of Hashem is hiding, is hidden in all particles of creation and in the secret of the names of the particles that have been created, we can learn and find His will inside all those particles. And we were looking and learning a little bit about the letters and we saw that the letters they have different shapes, different figures and they have different value, numeral value and, and they have different aspects and when you combinate those letters you build out of those letters words and words become sentences and sentences becomes ideas and long long understandings and that's the way the Creator created the world. By taking one stone and adding it to the next, and two stones, you put them together, like that it's written in Sefer Yetzirah, and you can make more combinations out of those two. And if you add a third stone, so you have more combination, you put them in different orders, and then you have more combinations. And four stones can make much more combinations, and fifth and sixth will make a big, big changes already. You can create many, many things with six letters, eight and nine, and on and on and on. And now, a person that is aware to all that knowledge, that can find that wisdom inside of his mind, and he understands that, yes, the Creator put so much light and so much knowledge and information inside the creation and I can learn from like that it's written on the righteous people on Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai and on other righteous people that they had the ability to understand the conversation ways of communication between the trees the palm trees and the animals birds that are flying in the air they could understand the will of the Creator that is communicating through those animals and through those particles of creation and he had the ability, the access into those ancient archives of wisdom, of knowledge, to understand the will of Hashem in every part and part of the creation. Now, let's say that we have that level. Let's say that we learn the, the, the wisdom and we bought and purchased that knowledge and now we know what, what is the will of Hashem still. What does Hashem want from us to do with that knowledge? The Zohar Kadosh is telling us that the purpose of the creation is, and it's written like that, begin le, that everyone will be aware to him. Oto yitbarach, oto yitbarach. To know him, the source of blessing, the blessed one, and to recognize him that same source of blessing, the Creator Himself. That's the purpose of us putting our mind and understanding the secret of creation, that we will find Him inside the creation, that we will recognize Him under His coverings and other, under His outfits, that He is covering Himself like that it's written, Melokol Haaretz Kevodo, that all of the world is full with coverings that are respecting him, like royal garments that are respecting him and covering him, that there will be no access to those ones that don't have the merit to see him in his beauty, to visit in his place, to see him in his glory, and to find closeness to him as a pleasant thing. Those ones that are not worthy won't cross those obstacles. They won't understand that behind those coverings it's Him Himself that is hiding and waiting for us to come closer to Him again. So the real purpose of us learning those combinations and the methods and the wisdom of all the secret and Kabbalah is that finally the conclusion, the result of our learning will be that our faith will be complete. That our knowledge and our understanding will be perfect. Not to forget Him for one moment. That's the purpose of our learning. That is the real purpose of our learning. 
the Talmud is bringing many stories about righteous people that were learning Kabbalah, that were talking about the Holy Chariot that we will speak and discuss about the Holy Chariot a little bit today. Hopefully you're going to touch it with our fingertips a little bit to understand what are the, how many options we have to connect ourselves to that Holy Chariot. And while they were discussing and talking about those actions that called Maaseh Merkava, about the Holy Chariot of Hashem, immediately fire was coming down from heaven, surrounding them, circling them, and blocking from every person that is not worthy to come and join that conversation. An angel would come themselves, have, must feeling that, feeling that they must and have to listen to their conversation, to the conversation of those righteous ones. Like people that are coming to visit in a, in a wedding, watching the bride and the groom, that they're walking to the chuppah together to, to, to get married, and everyone are talking, and everyone are exciting, look at the dress of the, of the bride, on the suit of the, of, the, of the groom, look at them, how beautiful they are, everyone are chatting and talking and celebrating, that's how the angels feel when two righteous people are talking about the fact that there is a holy chariot that is carrying the Creator Himself and delivers the light of Him to the creation. Now what is that Maaseh Merkava? What is that huge action that brings the Creator to reveal Himself to drive himself to, to pull his light down to earth, down to this world, in his holy chariot. What are those actions that we can discuss, that righteous people found and discussed and spoke about, and by that making all those wonders? Because like we said, the purpose of our learning is to know Him and recognize Him. And if you remember the first class that we spoke over here, we said that to learn for yourself, like the meaning of the word Kabbalah, to accept is must be wrong. Because to accept to yourself is a selfish will. It cannot be that that will be the purpose of us learning Kabbalah. Because we want to receive, because we want to know, because we want to enjoy that cannot be the real essence of why to learn Kabbalah. And then we came with that understanding that we should receive with the intention to give. That we're learning because we want to have the ability to share and to let that light shine upon all of our beloved ones. That we're willing to give and to spread the faith and to distribute the light of Hashem and even to become light to the nations like the, the Torah is telling us that that's the purpose of us receiving the wisdom in the first place. That we will know and have the ways to teach all human beings, all races, and everyone, how to recognize the Creator, to believe in Him, and to come. And in that day, the house of prayer will be the house of prayer to all nations, and everyone will come and bow to Him on the holy mountain in Jerusalem, the holy city in the holy land. And everyone, all the nations, all people around the world, will know His name and will call Him in His name. So, for that cause, for that purpose, we're learning Kabbalah. Now, what are those actions that we can do in our life to bring the light of the Creator to a complete attachment that we will become vessels that are worthy to become holy chariots to the light of Hashem? Because it's written and we know that the first understanding that we had about those chariots is that our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and then King David joined them. They were the holy chariot of Hashem. Like that it's written on Abraham that he was including himself b'midat ha'chesed. He was including himself and became the kindness itself. Not that he was a man of kindness, that he was very generous. He was so into kindness that today when we are talking about 
Abraham, we're talking about kindness. If you see the word Abraham written in the Zohar HaKadosh in different places, you can replace the name Abraham in the word chesed, kindness, and it will fit perfectly. Why? Because he become, out of his effort, completely one with that midah, with that attribute, with that light of Hashem that is called chesed. And Isaac had his job in power and in judgments, and Jacob in tiferet, that is glory. And all the righteous people had their job and achieved a certain level, and by that they delivered the light of the Creator down to earth. And today when you want to connect yourself to the Creator in a certain lane, in a certain channel, in a certain path, you can connect yourself to that righteous man that is standing in that midah, in that spiritual gate, and to connect yourself to him, to learn about him, to learn about his actions. And by connecting yourself to that righteous man, you receive the light that the Creator treasured inside of him, corresponding to his effort and his dedication while he was serving Hashem with all his power. And we can enjoy today the light of the ancestors and all the rest of the righteous ones that made that effort of complete Mesirut Nefesh, gave their heart out, risking their lives and dedicated so much and, and, and suffered and sacrificed so much to bring the light of Hashem so we can enjoy by learning from their books, enjoying their quotes and, and, and their actions until today in this world. So this is the beginning that we are preparing ourselves to that learning while connecting ourselves to those pillars of the world, to the righteous ones. But then, when you feel that you have also something to give, when you realize that you're not only a learner, you're also someone that is able to teach, that you learn a certain amount that gives you the ability to help other people. In that moment, you are not only a receiver, you also become to be a giver. You can reveal the light of Hashem in new forms, in new ways, in new lights. And then, not only that you can wash yourself in the light and the illumination of those righteous ones, you can become a holy chariot on your own. And other people that are surrounding you can wash, cleanse, and purify themselves in you while receiving your face, hearing your voice, looking at your eyes, shaking your hand, receiving a hug from you, a touch, a word, a wisdom. No matter what you give and supply, they will be purified by you. Not because that you have the ability to heal and to build and to purify. We are nothings except of vessels. But when you built your vessel in a proper way, the light of Hashem, that it's the light of healing, that it's the light of health and happiness, and kindness and good in all aspects of good, that light, you will be that one to deliver that light to your surroundings and you become a holy chariot that connects and delivers the light of Hashem to the world. Once I was sitting a sandak, a godfather in a Brit Milah, in, 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 in Brit Milah in Israel, and there was a rabbi that came, he was the Mohel, he was the one that was, uh, uh, um, um, how you say Mohel? Mohel, Mohel, Mohel. Yeah. Mohel. Everyone knows Mohel. He was the Mohel. And that rabbi is standing and I'm talking to my students. And one of my students was asking me questions about Shalom Bayit, peace in his house, relationship with his wife, simple things about understanding her opinion and conversations that they had. And I start explaining to him that he needs to take his mind one step back and to look at their conversation as messages that he's receiving from the Creator. 
try to put your mind into a bigger picture than to what that she told you and how did you respond and what you felt when she said and based on what and if she was wrong or maybe not if she were aware to your thoughts or not or whatever take one step back like a technician someone needs to 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 fix a radio a, a, an engine if your mind, if your eyes, if your, your face is inside the engine, inside all the, the particles, you cannot fix it. Sometimes you need to move yourself one step back to look at all of it again, to open things, to make spaces between the particles, to breathe, to relax, and then to restart, and then to go back into the depths of that machine and to rebuild it and to fix it. Sometimes you need to make one step back because you want to go deeper and inner with that intention to take responsibility and to fix. And while I was explaining to him that really I can see very, very amazing messages and depths of wisdom in that conversation of him and his wife, his wife and him, that rabbi that was the Mohel came to me and took me to the side and he told me, what are you doing? So I told him what seems to be the problem. <laughs> and that person is a real righteous man. I know him. And he's also a son of a real righteous man, a known and very famous right, righteous man, a very old and, and unique human being. And he took me to the side and he's asking me, what are you doing? So I told him, what do you want? I'm happy. What? Talking to my students. He said, no, no, no. You're not allowed to talk Bemaseh Merkava. You're not allowed to talk about the actions of the Holy Chariot. So I told him, listen, that's how I speak to my, my students. That's how I speak to my children. What do you want? That I'm just like, we're talking about the truth, about reality. And he told me, look, I don't have permission from heaven to have that kind of conversation. If you take that on yourself, it's okay by me. But I'm not allowed to talk like that. And I was doing a simple thing in my eyes. What that I was doing was only to go into the details of reality. I was not mentioning names of angels. I was not taking first letters from different verses and counting 49 letters till the next one. I was not dealing with all that noise. I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm saying I was not doing it. I was breathing. I was relaxing. I was thinking clearly. I was trying to find Hashem and the light that Hashem delivered to me was in the eyes of that righteous man that I know that he's very innocent and righteous. Another righteous man that is well known and been famous almost only after he passed away. He himself testified on that mohel that I just spoke about that in different lifetime he was a Tana. He was from the generation of Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai in a different generation. We are talking about a real righteous man that is doing a lot of good in this world. And he, in his eyes, what that I was doing was actions of Merkava bringing and delivering the light of Hashem into this world in a way that is not permitted to everyone to do. The truth is that he was right, that he is right. And he also might not have the authority, the, 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 the permission to speak on those topics from heaven. That's his story. I know that I committed myself to Hashem and based on my dedication to Hashem and my will to reveal the truth and to uncover the will of Hashem to the world, I took that upon myself never to hide and never to, 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 to keep secrets to myself and not to share. My mission is to share and to reveal it to the world and that's what that I'm doing while teaching because I know that that is the real will of the Creator for me. Every person should know himself, work on knowing himself, finding himself and based on his deep understandings to believe in himself that that one that he found out that it's really him to go with that and to do and keep God's will. That's the real completion of a human being.
that he finds himself, he knows who he is and what's his mission, and he believes in his importance and goes and delivers the news and the message to, to, to whatever, to whoever Hashem wants him to speak with and, and, and help to. Now, the real way of us becoming that holy chariot to reveal and to bring down to this world the light of Hashem is by going into the depths of simple truth. Simple truth. For an example, if there was a person that sinned, that he did something horrible, that he knows about himself, that he feels bad about that action that he made, he regrets. Now, he can criticize himself, he can hate himself, he can blame himself, he can do whatever he wants with that memory of his bad action. But, I'm asking that person, please go deep into the real reason of why you sinned, why you messed up big time in that day. Let's say that it happened when you were 20. Let's say that it happened when you were 17. You did something horrible with your life when you were 17. Great, I'm asking you now, was that the real beginning to that sin, to that failure of yours? Or that maybe in that day when you were 17, you were just not able to hold on anymore and to suffer anymore, but the real sorrow and the real beginning of that crash, of that failure, really started in real, real young ages before you even were aware to yourself. Certain patterns that came to you from the house, from your parents, from your siblings, from your community, from certain things in your nature that you came down to this world with that kind of character. For an example, that you are terrified in certain situations, that you fail in anger very easily, that you have crazy lusts and desires not balanced at all compared to your friends and to other people that you know, that you're weak in certain aspects of your life in a different way than other people. But wait, before of judging yourself, I'm asking you, was that failure that took place when you were 17 the beginning of other failures or that it was only a result of something that started much, much earlier. I don't have a doubt what the real answer is. Because when we are failing, we think that we had a free choice. And because that we chose wrong, we're blaming ourselves. But the truth is that there are many, many things that are hidden from our awareness and from our knowledge. And those things are pushing us to take decisions. For an example, a poor person can find himself stealing in much easier, easier than, than a wealthy person. A wealthy person doesn't have a reason to steal so fast, but a poor person that is really hungry and sees his children star uh, uh, starving, it's very easy for him to fail in, 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 in stealing, to steal something food for an example so he will blame himself on stealing food and I will tell him listen I can understand you why you failed I'm not justifying your act you took something that you were not supposed to take but I can understand what brought you to fail in that thing people men that failed with women women that failed with men did certain things that were not appropriate, that were not good. You can blame yourself. I violated the rules of the Torah. I went against the will of Hashem. I violated the holiest covenant. Okay, I hear you. But I'm asking you to grow and to get older in the house of your parents, with your parents, with your father or without a father, with your mother, your unique mother or without your mother. In your reality, was it easy? Was it normal? Was it a sane environment to build you with tools and abilities not to sin and not to crime and not to fail? The answer is no. The Gemara is asking us, 
מה יעשה הנער ולא יחטא? How can you expect that kid not to sin? If you brought him down to the world in a, a negative environment, with negative manners and behaviors around him, different weird culture, with, surrounded with all kinds of distractions, lust and desires, having bad role models around him, what do you want? Like, really, in reality, what do you want? How can you punish him on that? How can you judge him and criticize him on that in the same way that you will judge someone that was not exposed to television, to filthy movies, to bad manners, bad behaviors, and all kinds of, of, of darkness? You cannot put them on the same scale. They're different people, different backgrounds, and that's why we cannot judge ourselves. So, when we are searching for the truth, and when we want to become a holy chariot to the Creator, we must look for the real truth. Not only to read the dark letters that are written in the verses or in the Jewish rules of Halakha. You're allowed to do this, you're not allowed to do that. There is much more that is written between the lines on that white flaming fire that is the sea of infinity there is much more that is written than in the verses themselves and only when your desire is an honest desire really to serve the creator and really to commit yourself to the divine truth you will find the ability to access to the real knowledge that is written between the lines. As long as you're just trying to justify your sins and your crimes, and you're too lazy to work on yourself, and you don't want to improve, to improve and you're just asking for yourself for, for, for quick solutions, and an answer how to reject the rebuke and to permit yourself to sin and crime, you can make up understandings. You can make up a whole set of rules that won't be really established on foundations of truth. But when your heart desire the truth, the conclusions that you will come up with while trying to read between the lines, trying to understand the intention of the author, and not only the logic of the sentences and the orders and the commandments, just also to understand what he was telling me. What are those verses commanding me in my lifetime, in my situation, as of today, as of my spiritual level, with my tools, with my knowledge? What does the Creator want from me? When that is your holy desire, and that is the energy that is pushing you, that is your motive and your motor that drives you forward to find the real truth between the lines, then you can deliver the light of the Creator, you can shine to your surroundings the light of Hashem in every situation because you are connecting yourself to the real truth to the real truth to the truth of the creation to who Hashem made you to be and you are breaking the code you're receiving the key to change nature when you understand the complete picture, when you connect yourself completely to the truth of every situation in life. Kabbalah is not a book. Kabbalah is not a method. Kabbalah is not an amount of wisdom that been given to us by the Ariya Kadosh to his students, by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, to his hidden group that was sitting in a cave and learning at night at midnight. No. Kabbalah is the hovering spirit that hovers above the water, is the spirit of Mashiach. It's the Torah She'Be'al Peh, it's the oral Torah that has been given to the righteous ones, and there is much more to say, and it's like the air that never ends. It's like the water that never finishes. Always when you run out of water, there will be more rain. 
always when you run out of air there will be more oxygen and air will come and blow into your life you cannot avoid the holy influence of spirituality because the creator is keep on running the world and sending the lifeline of refreshing information and new knowledge that will fit and will fix the last generation and always in the present always in the moment new wisdom and new understanding is taking place and healing the world and balancing the world and we can become those vessels to grab that light and to share it between all of our beloved ones all of our surroundings by connecting ourselves to the real truth for that a person must be honest to connect himself to his inner voice and to be brave to confront his fears and to go all the way with his inner investigation to find his true self and when he will do that when we will do that we will be exposed and we will reveal the hidden secrets of creation from the ancient archive from the earliest days before of creation from Kedem from those days that the Creator was thinking and planning and preparing and, 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 and hoping to reveal His kindness to the world before of creation. Inside of ourselves we have an inner channel that is a spiritual connection to the Creator's archives, to the Creator Himself and it's our soul. You have your soul and your soul is connected from within. When we will make those wonderful classes, the meditation classes here in Manhattan, I will share with you a little bit from what that I learned and experienced about how to make those holy meditations. And I will teach you a few ways of how to meditate. And hopefully we'll have more sessions and more sessions in the future really to practice and to understand in a practical way how to do it, how to find Hashem in our lives. And there are many ways. You can do it through music, you can do it through m movements and dancing, you can do it by, by prayer, you can do it by thoughts, you can do it by memorizing holy names and mentioning them one after the other. There are ways to write those letters, if it's in lines, long lines, if it's in circles, if it's to repeat them, if it's to think about them, if it's to express them in your mouth, and if it's to drop all of it and just to throw yourself on the light of Hashem and to ask for guidance. There are many, many ways to meditate and to reconnect ourselves from within. But every single person that desire the truth must understand that the real truth is an inner truth, is not an external truth. The external world is here standing for you as a mirror is standing for you as speakers to tell you the will of Hashem and the real work, the real effort that you should take, the real conclusions out of what that you saw must be in your home field, in your own inside, in your own soul. That you will take what that you experience today and you will try to understand what in the world Hashem was trying to say what is the message where are my links where are my connections to the Creator and when you will find the real truth the real truth not the truth of what the, the verse is saying on a person that committed or did or done or whatever not what the, that rabbi or the other rabbi is saying and I'm not saying that they are wrong right now they might be right but you must understand what is your private message what was your creator trying to tell you through that life experience and when you will reach that truth you reach that diamond, you reach that pearl, you're climbing out of the depths with a treasure in your hand. You found the spark, 
And that spark is a part of your puzzle to complete the whole picture of your knowledge, to recognize him and to know him, the source of blessing, the blessed one. And it's a two billion parts puzzle. Many, many sparks to uplift and to bring. But like I said before, it's not our first lifetime. We are old souls. We are ancient souls. And we are carrying within already thousands on thousands of diamonds and good stones and spiritual sparks of deep understandings. And this is why we are ready and we're finding ourselves qualified to put our mind into the learning of Kabbalah. Even if we are looking at our physical body and we see that we look like we are not supposed to be here, that we are not supposed to take part of all those wise, deep learnings, but it's not the real truth. It's maybe the truth in a certain aspect, in a certain way, but if you will make a deep investigation, searching for the real truth, finding the essence of your life, you will come out with deeper understanding and you will come out with the real will of the Creator from you. And when you'll find that, you'll find pleasant. You'll find satisfaction and happiness. Because just to function as robots, just to run after commandments and doing other people's will and fulfill their expectations will never bring you to happiness. But the verse is saying that when the person is keeping the will of Hashem and the orders of Hashem in a straight way, it brings him to happiness. Pikudei Hashem yesharim mesamchei lev. So if you're not happy, it still means that you're not on the right path, on the right route, route. You need to find yourself. And when you will find your true self, you'll find your happiness. Let's say that I pray for a house. And let's say that I've been answered and got my house. You will find some happiness in my salvation, but it's not your complete salvation. It won't complete your sadness to become happiness. It won't balance your life completely. It might balance my life, but not yours. This is a clear evidence that you must find yourself and that you must fight for your belongings and that you should find your own treasures because you will never achieve completion unless you will know who you are. You will be aware to your needs. You will pray for them and find them, complete them, and then you'll find true happiness. The complete redemption is built out of small redemptions of the individuals. And we are all parts of that gigantic puzzle that builds from the wide world, from all the souls that came down through the first man and his wife, Adam and Eve. And we are all part of their souls. And that is the real will of the Creator from us. Even when you are learning, and even if you're putting your mind into secret learning of Kabbalah, and you putting your mind into ancient hand rites of righteous people, this is fantastic, but remember, this is an external learning, even if you're learning secrets. Even if the name of that book is the book of Pnimiyut, the book of inside, it's a physical book that made out of paper, been printed with ink. Okay, it's physical. Now, if you want to connect that wisdom that you received, that you learned to the truth, you need to bring it inside. You need to think about that learning. You need to meditate about that learning. You need to pray about that learning. You need to feel that learning. You need to find what that learning means to you. Which changes took place inside of you while learning. Which developments you experienced while learning. Know how many pages 
Not how many lines you can memorize by heart. How many deep understandings? How deep is your level of awareness today? How much more attachments to the Creator you can find in every moment of your life corresponding to the learning from that fantastic book? Remember, the connection to the Kabbalah, to the Creator, to the secret, to the truth is a real inner connection. And if someone that comes from outside tells you, come, I'll take you to learn Pnimiyut, it's nonsense. Pnimiyut is inside of you. No one can teach you Pnimiyut. Someone can express and share with you his inner feelings from his life experience, can tell you what he went through, what he been taught. If you really want to access your Pnimiyut, your inside, you're going to have to walk in that path alone. It's the only way. You must go deep into your feelings, to be aware to your thoughts and your emotions, to use your senses. If you are ignoring your inside and you're following another man, you're walking outside. You're walking in an external path, even if it's being described and called and known as the path of secret, path of truth, path of Kabbalah, path of whatever. It won't bring you inside. If you want to get inside, you must do it on your own. That's what friends are for. That's what rabbis and holy teachers are for. To learn from them how to find your inner connection to the truth. And without that part, all kinds of learning of Kabbalah is equal to foreign idols, to foreign faith, and it's an external learning with no real attachment and connection to the Divine Creator. Only after learning something and bringing it in, v'yadata ayom, and you learned it today, now you know it, and then v'hashevota el levavecha, but you need to bring it back into your heart. Only by that you're completing your learning and your conclusions will be conclusions of truth. Conclusions that are based on information are not necessarily right. Conclusions that are based on life experience are for sure the right ones. When a person is willing to dedicate his life to that holy learning, he must at least have dedicate one part of his day to his soul, to his spirituality, and not to his learnings. His learning is part of his life, to the meditation, to his inner connection to the Hidbodedut, to his private time, in his private zone, in his own place, reconnecting himself to the divine source of his life from within, breathing and focusing in the truth, being aware to the messages and the signs that you receive during your lifetime, and especially today by the Creator, using people, teachers, sites, views, books, Google, all sources of information to wake you up to find your truth. This is the real secret of Kabbalah. This is the real approach of how to access to the wisdom of secret. That you know that you should come back to yourself with that learning that you just been taught. You sat and you learned something, you need to take that information and to see how it affects your soul. What, is the re re what are the reactions of your soul to that kind of learning? And when a person is doing it, he will rise and he will climb and he will develop in ways that no one will even understand. There will be no eye to see what that you saw. Because from inside, in Pnimiyut, 
we're all attached to the Creator and there is no levels of importance inside. We're all children of Hashem. We're all receiving our life from the same source of life. We're all equal in that place. There are no levels in that place. And the real closeness to the Creator of every individual will be set based on his holy desire to connect himself to the real truth, to the real will of Hashem. As much as you will be strong to sacrifice more for the real truth, to listen to the rebuke and to the messages even when it's painful, even when it's hurt, to be a person of truth, to be able to admit in your mistakes, to be a person of truth and to go all the way with your real inner conclusions and deep understandings and not to be scared and afraid of people and not to be rejected by difficulties and obstacles along the way, just to push forward and to keep on doing and to try as much as you can and to be willing to sacrifice and some, sometimes even to lose for noble causes, for divine purposes. Corresponding to that kind of effort, your spiritual level will be set. And it's a never-ending progress. It's a never-ending story. You can climb and climb and climb forever. There is no one that can stop you from your spiritual development when you are connecting yourself to the Creator from within. They can take all the books in the world from you that you won't have no time to learn, that you will be so exhausted and, and, and your mind will be so troubled that you cannot focus in anything but while closing your eyes, you can scream through your soul to the Creator, I want you, I want to come back, I want to be one with you in such honesty that your attachment will be complete, that your closeness to Him will be perfect, even when no one around you can recognize your greatness even when no one of your surrounding can understand the purity of your soul, the honesty of your scream, of your tear, of your yearnings, of your holy desires. Your spiritual level is not being set by the opinions of other people, not rabbis, not coach, coaches, not experts, and, 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 and no one. There is no man that will decide what will be your future. No person on earth will take decisions instead of the Creator Himself. He brought you down to this world and your connection from earth is with Him. To reconnect yourself to the essence of your life, to your real being, and then by that to enjoy the endless joyful life of satisfaction and growth in the divine world in the world to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bo Hashem, we're very happy to have this wonderful, wonderful cooperation with the kosher Kabbalah and experience. And we're the Muna Project and the Muna Project is already almost 10 years um, online and on the roads and close to 2,000 videos already YouTube, Facebook, all kinds of social media outlets you're more than welcome to enjoy and, and to learn we have a lot of content on many many subjects and the real truth is that we desire hoping and praying for years already to reach out to as many people as we can because the Creator already gave us that green light, that power and to give people the power to make changes in their lives. Now, we're not allowed to hold back a certain gift like that. So please, 
If you want to help us and to organize classes in your areas, in your communities, in your hometowns, in your synagogues, in your houses, to your friends, just be in touch with us and share all of our content and our social media information between your friends and people. Those kinds of classes are life savings for many people that are searching for the truth. I never, never, never tell anyone that he should change, ever, because I don't think that no one should change. I think that when someone tells you that you need to change, it's because that he is not aware to how good you are from inside, how good you really are. You don't need to change, you just need to stop being so scary to be who you are. You are fantastic. You are who Hashem made you to be. We're not trying to change no one. We're just trying to plant courage and strength in, in, into the hearts of, of our friends and students that they will find the power to be who they are and just really to live their life in comfort, with honesty, with dignity, with happiness, with pride. Be happy to be who that Hashem made us to be. No one created us except of who that created the wide world with all of that wisdom that is, is hidden inside of it. And He made us exactly who we are. Brought us down in our religion and in our culture and in our agenda and in our family and in that day, in that date, under that effect of the stars and the so many things those friends that school that neighborhood learning certain profession Hashem he knows the secrets he's the only one that knows exactly how and why and we just need to reconnect ourselves to him to understand what really he wants us to do what's our real job and mission on earth and not what other people try to affect us to think. People try to move you from who you are because they never found themselves. And they don't feel comfortable with themselves. So they're trying to push you to their place that they will feel more comfortable over there. Because they feel solitary and alone and, and divided and disconnected and, and, and wrong. So they want more people on their side to feel comfortable. Oh, now I'm right, justifying themselves. Oh, no, I was... Instead of really being brave and strong and powerful to find the real essence of your life and to find comfort and happiness with who you are and to let other people feel comfortable with who that they are and just to make the world nicer and a little bit more relaxed. That's our, our goal. And that's our prayer. And may Hashem answer to all of our prayers and requests. Amen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.